Hi, welcome to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. We've had a bunch of emails and requests uh, to see me actually mount something. So what I'm going to try to do is put together a deer head over a series of several weeks of tips. We're going to try to attempt to do that. So today we're going to start at step one with a mannequin and a set of antlers that you might remember from a previous tip that we skinned. So we're going to get ready to um, start mounting ahead. First thing we have to do is prep our mannequin and uh, make sure that it's level. My stand is already level and it's also plumb with the wall. I have a nice straight line back here that I can line my, my mannequin seam on to make sure I'm straight up and down. So all I have to do is check the level of my eyes with my bubble level. And that's level. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my uh, antlers on. And I always set them in Bondo. And if you've never played with Bondo before, it's pretty fun. And we set them in Bondo so that uh, they won't snap in two or something if they take a big hit or fall off the wall. and uh, save problems down the road. So if anyone hasn't ever used Bondo, its primary purpose is to repair uh, cars, uh, auto body repair, fender dents and stuff. But it's a, a resin with a hardener catalyst. Put the catalyst in and we mix it to an even color. Once we've got it mixed into an even color, I take and uh, well, I'm not going to do it that way. I'll just do it this way. Put our big blop of bondo onto the antler block. We'll set our antlers on, and if you recall, in my skinning video, I cut this so that it would fit here. And all we have to do is make sure our center line back here is centered, and our front seam is centered. We'll go ahead and screw it down with four drywall screws. I don't always sink them hard because sometimes you have to adjust your antlers to level if the skull is slightly off. Like so. Just gonna set this for three. And it's on pretty solid. We'll go ahead and push our bondo out. Now while we're waiting for that to kick, we'll go ahead and we have to make a slot for our tear duct. One on each side. And our lift slot, which is we're going to follow this line here on the mannequin. And we're going to go in up at an angle here to make room for the corner of our lip. I cut this not straight, not straight up. I cut this at an angle until I get to the front. The front of the lip, I make it straight. So normally I don't use this hand saw, I use a power saw, but it scares people. 
So for the purpose of this video, I just kind of use a handsaw. And there's our lip slot. Next thing we need to do is auger out our nostrils, which I use this chisel, half round, to come in and clean out enough material to tuck my lips. I mean my nostrils. Sorry. Getting uh, my nostrils mixed up with my lips. Now, how do I know what shape to make? It's just from the years of experience, but if you don't know what to do, you just starting out, you need to grab a reference. Here's a nose, cast off a nose. It has our shape here, and that's all I'm doing is mimicking this shape here. So when we tuck the nose in, it will be the correct shape. Having done that, I come in and just clean it up a little with the file. Just take down some of the roughness. We're going to put some smoothing clay and blending clay to get rid of any unevenness later on when we apply the skin. And after that, we just got to knock off some of these seams. I use a stout rough, I mean a sure foam. Get rid of the seams here. finishing we're gonna make paper mache we're gonna make some mache and that's what we're gonna use to uh, fill in this area all the meat off the skull where we've taken it off and cleaned it so all you have to do to make paper mache is take I use chopped Roofing insulation, R19 paper, it's already cut up. We take that 50 50 with some plaster and we mix it together. We mix it's a little bit too much, but just for the sake of this video, I don't want to run short. I always have dextrin around, which is a dried glue. I always just toss a little dextrin in. Then we just add our water. And we mix it to whatever consistency you like to to apply it at. I don't like to wait on mache, so I like to make mine a little bit stiff. about there. One thing I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to put the ears back. So I'm going to take my sure foam and knock off this sharp corner here in the back. Because these come set for the ears forward. I'm just going to make some room so that I can put my ears back. setting up nice. Then I remembered that I didn't cinch down this rear screw because I wanted it to be level. So I'm going to go ahead and kiss that down. Tighten up that one a little bit more. That one, this one's tight. So that's done. And 
put my mache on. And all I'm redoing is replacing, I'm not trying to build this up too much. I just want to replace the meat that was taken off the skull when we, when the, if you remember the video when we sawed it off, there's a bunch of meat on here. We're just going to make it, I have to keep these tags on by law and as you can see they're starting to annoy me. So see, I'm going to make this real nice. Can you see that nice in the camera? Good. And because I like to make my mache a little thicker, I can put it on like putty sometimes. Again, when I set this, this is a one eighth inch lower. The, the skull is set one eighth inch below the edge of the mannequin so we can blend this mache and have it be the correct size when we apply the skin so it's not overbuilt. on the mannequin I end it at the end of the antler block so that the skin's gonna lay exactly like it would when we took it apart just need a little more up here on the top pretty much that's all we need to do to get this mannequin ready. I've already put a hanger on it. Now, if you follow me over here, the next step would be to prep the skin, which I'm going to do on the next tip, right here at my prepping station. So thanks for watching, thanks for the interest, and I'll see you next week when we work on this skin on Tuesday's Taxidermy Tips.